Hey everyone, it is good to see you and thank you for joining the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show. Today we are going to cover my thoughts on the Airbnb business plus what is arguably probably one of the most ridiculous bathrooms I've seen to date. <laughs> so without any further delay, let's go ahead and drop the needle and get this thing going. Hey everybody, it is Mark Dolfini and I am the Landlord Coach. I hope you're having an amazing day. It is such a beautiful day outside. Got to have some lunch with my bride because it was grilled cheese o'clock and uh, we get to have lunch together about every about every weekday, which is pretty cool. So I get to do that with my bride. But um, And if you ever saw my bride, you would understand that I, she is very much out of my league, and uh, so I got to nurture that as much as possible. So, <laughs> so for those of you who were asking me, thank you. Uh, if you saw the show yesterday, you saw that I was um, on a roof, and uh, I was tore off. Um, had a little bit of help, you know, had significant help. I want to say I did it all by myself, but I had some help, and we tore off this eight square shingled roof. Um, probably the biggest challenge of it was not falling through because it was, it was all built on OSB and there was sections of that that got soft and, uh, not, not killing myself as I was falling through. So there was sections where I was just standing on the rafters trying not to fall through and you were all like, so how sore are you today? (laughs) Yeah, I'm not actually that bad, which makes me wonder should I let my guard down and be like, yeah, I'm not as out of shape as I thought, or am I really going to hurt tomorrow? Because when you get that like full day before your body just lays some hate on you, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but uh, <laughs> that is truly the worst when you have that like three or four day delay and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, what happened? I feel like I got smacked around with a bat. Anyway, um, so I've got a um, a good question that came through on Messenger about... Uh, my thoughts on the Airbnb industry and um, and how that is related to not only COVID and just my thoughts in general on the Airbnb. They were thinking about doing the Airbnb industry and you know if that would be worthwhile. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never done Airbnb personally. I'm I'm just giving you my. I'm going to editorialize here for just a second and just give you my straight up opinion. And this is also based on some people that I other people that I see do Airbnb. Um, just my general thoughts on Airbnb. So here goes. I'm just letting you know this is not based on empirical data or or um, but it's based on what I've heard, what I've seen other people. So you know, take this for whatever you'd like. Um, let me let me go ahead over some positives that I see in the Airbnb uh, industry that are hard to ignore. Like number one, the the dollars that come out of an Airbnb property are hard to ignore, and man, that is probably the most attractive part of it. Like is the revenue part of it. And you know, let's say for argument's sake that you could normally rent a house for you know say a thousand a month. Um, you know, Airbnb, you could get four to five times that revenue if you're managing it well on on the same property now granted you would have a larger investment because you'd have to outfit it with obviously furniture and you know uh, other tchotchke stuff to make sure that their their stay is is comfortable you know with laundry soap and shampoo and other soaps and even you know uh sodas and stuff like that stocked in the refrigerator but still that is part of the experience right i'll talk about that here in a minute but generally, I mean, when you're looking at the revenue and you're looking at the returns, if you're buying the properties right, if you bought a property as a rental and the numbers would work as a rental, but then you convert it over to Airbnb, man, I'll tell you what, those numbers are very, very, very attractive. You know, again, for a property that you might get, I'm, and again, I'm just spitballing here, but a property that you might get $1,000 a month for, you might be getting... 4,000 or 5,000 a month for just because, you know, just depending on the market, depending on what your demand is and that sort of thing. So the Airbnb can be a really, really attractive thing. That's something that can be really, really attractive. Um, And from a real estate perspective, the returns can be phenomenal. So if you bought it as a rental and you decided to convert that over to the, to an Airbnb use or VRBO, VRBO's um, basically same concept you know it just depends on which avenue you're marketing it through and from what i understand you know you don't have exclusivity you can market it both 
organically through your own stuff. You can market it through VRBO or through Airbnb or whatever. Whatever platform you want to be on, you can you can do that. Now, from a positives, again, that can be it, it can cover a lot of, lot of positives. And even if you wanted to just Airbnb a room, you know, that's a positive too. And the other side of this too is I see, I hear a lot of people that really enjoy it because they enjoy people. So if that's something that you like that interaction, you enjoy people, that sort of thing. Now, of course, the COVID world, everybody's supposed to be, you know, you know, staying six to, I guess, nine feet apart is what I'm hearing now, like nine feet. That's now a thing or 10 feet. So I, I don't, I, I'm not even sure where that's become, but I see on people's side of their vans or outside, like, please maintain nine feet or 10 feet. I'm thinking like, okay, I, I'm not sure where that started, but you know, whatever. Obviously, in, in the Airbnb world, if you're liking the interaction with the with your clients, that's not going to be you're not going to be able to do that in a, in a COVID world, and I don't know how long that'll last in a post-COVID world. So that's what I um, that's my thoughts. So again, po lots of positives for Airbnb. For me, it doesn't fit my it doesn't fit a lot of boxes that I want to check. Let's go back to the Time Wealthy Investor book for just a second where as you know i talk about vision infrastructure process it does not fit within my vision at all like it does not even remotely attract me it's not attractive to me at all just because i'm th sitting here thinking about it like okay well why doesn't it fit my vision well I, you know realistically between me and my bride and we're reworking our vision again we're going through our vision this week um, we're going to talk about it again this weekend coming up uh, my, my my bride and i so when I sit down with Jennifer, you know, we want to start, re, you know, remapping out different things like where do we want our lives to go, right? Today, you know, mark the day um, that's really significant for my wife or her sister who passed away earlier this year. Um, it's her birthday. And I know it's really, really a hard day for her. But if nothing else, it should re invigorate the thoughts about why you're here because we're not I mean she died at 39 years old and that sucks right I mean it's it's we don't want to have our lives lived until we're 39 we want to live a good ripe long age but nothing is guaranteed so that's why it's important that we you know for that we're intentional about the time that we have here on this rock so that's why I'm looking at some of the challenges now again I'm not here to wet the charcoal on it it's just this isn't what this is why it's not attractive to me to me, I don't look at Airbnb as a real estate business. I look at it as a hospitality business. And that is, I think, rightfully placed. Because realistically, the real estate business is, you know, if I'm analyzing properties, I see people analyzing properties for the distinct purpose of buying them and using them as an Airbnb. If it doesn't work as an Airbnb, the numbers just flat won't work. They're buying it expecting there to be four and five times the revenues that you would get out of a normal rental property. So I would argue that it's a little dangerous if you're buying it for that sole purpose and the numbers don't, don't work, especially if you're buying it leveraged. So for those people who are who have not been getting revenues, who are highly leveraged, that got into the Airbnb market, um, and were, were needed those numbers for, for it to work. They needed those $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 a month for it to work. And they, they weren't getting that. Well, that's, that's going to be tricky for them. Now, um, so it does track the hospitality industry. So we're talking about Airbnb stuff and why, why it works and, why, and, and, and some challenges that I see. So it does track the hospitality industry, meaning that if there is a recession and travel will be limited, that the hospitality industry is takes the brunt of that, right? But not always, especially in the Airbnb thing, you know, on the on the Airbnb side of things, like I have a great friend who who absolutely crushes it in the Airbnb space. Um, uh, Richard Penn, I just want to relax and smoke cigars. Yes, <laughs> that's your that's a great vision, Richard. And I've seen you live out your vision and that's exactly right, which is why I don't want to create a job for myself, right? I wouldn't want to create a job for myself. I'll get to that here in a second. But as Elizabeth Mayora was saying, and if you've not followed her, follow her on Instagram because she's got a fantastic following. She gives a lot of really good tips on Airbnb stuff. Um, she was saying she's really, really busy right now. And I was like, really? What's what's causing you to be so busy? And it's because there's a lot of people that don't want to stay in a hotel because they're worried about COVID. So they want to stay in an Airbnb where they can be more comfortable. They can have 
um, you know, they can feel more like they're not living in a, in a box like you would experience out of a hotel. So for them, the Airbnb experience is, is just a flat, better experience, which I never thought of that. I never thought that that would be, you know, counter cyclical to the hospitality industry. But in this case that it is now, again, who knows when we're planning the next, you know, pandemic, <laughs> but if, if whatever that happens, that, that could be something that, that is going to show that Airbnbs are actually counter cyclical to the, uh, to the hospitality industry, meaning that when the hospitality industry cycles down, that the Airbnb industry will cycle up. Could be, could be interesting just to watch that as more data appear. The other thing that I was thinking about in terms of challenges, and I'm going to wrap up the, this segment of, um, this discussion here is it's going to be really, really bad for you if you don't have a system in place. Now, the Airbnb model, it does, from what I understand, it cause it captures the revenues for you. It really has like a reservation system. So you can bring this stuff online or, you know, take it offline as you want to. Even if you want to use the Airbnb yourself, you can certainly do that. But, um, you know, booking reservations. But it's also stuff that you've got to think about in terms of all the details, like inventory control. You know, how many forks, knives, and spoons do you have? Like, that's the sort of inventory at the property. But also think about stuff like shampoo bottles and bars of soap and stuff that you're going to be putting in the property. You know, towels and stuff like that that people can, you know, <laughs> that they can uh, purloin and take and take with them, right? Those sorts of things. So you've got to have some sort of inventory control system in place as well to make sure that your property is not going to be, you're not going to lose a bunch of stuff to pilferage. So, um, you know, th those are the sorts of things that you need to have in place. The other thing is you have to do your analysis. You have to know your numbers. So as you're going through your expense item, okay, now listen to me. If you listen to nothing else, please listen to this, okay? When you're going through your expenses and you're going through your revenues, your projected revenues and your projected expenses, every individual line item, Okay, every individual line item that you don't budget for becomes a job that you create for yourself. So let's say for argument's sake that you're you're going to Airbnb a house, a single family dwelling. Okay, so you've got the single family dwelling. Well, did you budget for mowing? Because I don't know about you, but unless, I mean, I don't know an Airbnb person that would be okay with firing up a lawnmower and having to mow a lawn if they're paying that kind of money right? So if you don't budget for mowing, guess what? You just created a mowing job for yourself. If you didn't budget for cleaning, guess what? You just created a cleaning job for yourself. Now, I hope to God, you know, think about this for a second. If that's a 12, 13, 14 hour, dollar an hour job, I hope to God you didn't get into that business to create a 12, 13 or 14 dollar an hour job for yourself. I hope that you would value your time more highly than that. So that's why I would say, Make sure that you're budgeting your time because, you know, you're, you're allocating that stuff on the spreadsheet appropriately. Because again, if you become, if you've created this job for yourself, you can never leave. You can never get away. You can never go live out the vision that you want to live. If your vision like, like Richard is to lay around and smoke cigars, well, if the property has to get mowed, well, you're not smoke, sitting around smoking a cigar that day. You're going to go and mow the lawn or go do the maintenance and repairs you know, things will break. Things need to be restocked. Things need to be refreshed, right? If, if you didn't, if you didn't budget for all that stuff, that those are all jobs that you've created for yourself. So from an Airbnb perspective, I like the business model. It's not for me. I like the business model and a lot of different things, but I would just say that make sure that you're budget, budgeting and allocating the, the appropriate amount of money and time. Um, so you're not creating a job for yourself. Okay. So that's, uh, that's that. So now, here it is. I want it, to, it's, it's everybody's favorite time, right? It's the most ridiculous thing on the internet. And without any further delay, let's go ahead and kick that off. So ridiculous. That's right. It is so ridiculous because I'm not even sure of what to make of this. Ay, ay, ay. This photo that we found online, and I will thank my assistant Kira for this, but it is... A bathroom that is like no other. Take a look at that gem. Yep, that's basically a... I, I'm not even sure how this room came to be, but if you look at the picture, it is a bathroom that is about as wide as the toilet. So basically, this is a bathroom for runway models. Um, 
I'm just wondering if, um, if the if this room was even designed to store anything like you know like spaghetti noodles. I know at one point in time they put a toilet at the end of it. I'm not really sure, but um, all I can tell you is that this bathroom is clearly Jenny Craig approved. <laughs> so yeah, I know. I thought it was funny. Anyway, that's all I have for today. So uh, thank you all for joining me today. It has been uh, it's always a pleasure to see you guys, and thanks for the support. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about a rental, uh, the rental business and how you can uh, take your business to the next level, head on over to LandlordCoach.com. There's a course over there. If you'd like to learn more about coaching, you can submit a coaching application. But that's all I have for today. Please remember to place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. Most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have a great rest of your day. We will see you next time. <laughs>